I genuinely feel like people are no longer trying to do things that they actually enjoy and people are no longer going on vacation to relax and to explore a different country or city or state that they've never been before. I genuinely feel like people go on vacation and go out and do specific activities all in the name of aesthetics, all in the name of posting it on TikTok, all in the name of posting it on Instagram. And it's quite sad. I used to have so much fun posting a blurry iPhone picture of me having fun with my friends on Instagram. Like, have you been, have you seen that explore page lately? Like there's literally a girl with 10 air balloons and a, like an eagle flying over it and like lights around it. Like how the f did you get that eagle to fly at the right time? I don't understand, man. So I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't post me having, you know, a milkshake at Denny's. That's weird. You know what I mean? So now like you, these standards keep rising. Like and how, how far is it going to go? Instagram influencers were exposed for paying for photo shoots in a fake private jet in Los Angeles that charges $60 an hour for people to take photos and post it on Instagram to look rich. Influencer Amelia Liana was also exposed for faking a penthouse suite view in Manhattan. Social media users noticed that Amelia's reflection in the photo was not mirrored and was taken from behind her. So essentially the window is reflecting her back, which would not make sense. And they also noticed that the Freedom Tower, an iconic New York City landmark was missing from her view in the photo, which made it very easy to see that the photo was photoshopped. And social media users also discovered that her photos at the Taj Mahal were photoshopped as the water appeared to be like overly reflective and the water was contorted in a really weird shape. Oh, and not to mention there was also not another single person pictured at this global tourist attraction except for Amelia. She also clearly photoshopped air balloons and a super picturesque background into her photos influencers are posting these so-called perfect photos to make themselves look rich and falsely influencing everyday people to do the same and it's just such a big problem Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley Viola and I make videos that focus on pop culture analysis and social commentary. And today I want to talk to you all about the obsession with aesthetics and the obsession with looking rich and how social media has in fact fostered this movement of just really shallowness and just a lack of individuality. This video is not going to be a critique of the act itself of acquiring money because I fully support wanting to attain financial security, even though I very much disagree with wealth hoarding, which is a topic for another video. But today I wanna to discuss not the act of having money, but the act of having to show it off and participate in conspicuous consumption to influence other people's perceptions of you and how that trickles down to the general working class public. The birth of influencer culture, I think, directly correlates to this obsession with aesthetics and this obsession with looking rich and looking wealthy all the time. I think influencer culture is inherently classist because in order for someone to influence you, to have an influence on you, in order for someone to be a, I don't know, trendsetter and someone who you're looking up to, you have to be looking up while they're looking down at you, right? There is an immediate power dynamic of of a have and a have not and the have not is spectating on the person that has and it's just this obsession with wealth and wealth corn with the p i can't i don't know if i could say that word but this obsession with watching celebrity closet tours and the lifestyles of the rich and famous when we think of some of the popular reality shows of the 2000s whether it was keeping up with the kardashians or mtv cribs or now how you have architectural digest which is supposed to be a more tasteful version of essentially what mtv cribs was which is just celebrities showing off their really lavish homes you really get a feel for the 
this obsession that we all have, the collective we, not necessarily me, but the obsession that we all have in spectating on the lives of rich and famous people. Now, when the influencer era was ushered in, in about 2011, 2012, 2013, like this is just off the top of my head as someone who lived through influencer culture, I think, and I've talked about this previously in my video about the rise and fall of the beauty community, specifically with the beauty influencer community, we were actually forming these really parasocial relationships, right? With these seemingly regular, regular, normal people. And of course, once influencing became a viable career, these influencers that we once looked at as like friends in our heads ended up becoming like rich pseudo celebrities. And I'm literally quoting myself. I said those exact words in that video, which you should definitely check out. But I think that that is, you know, obviously correlates to the rise of Instagram. Instagram really started to gain traction around that same time and led directly to the birth of the influencer in 2012, 2013. So these influencers start getting these really big sponsorships and brand deals and being flown out to, you know, different locations for brand trips and having these really elaborate, luxurious vacations that we all saw playing out on social media that then trickle down into the normies. You then started seeing your friend from high school trying to sell you Forex or Mary Kay or whatever get rich quick scheme of the moment that there was. It then started to trickle down though to normal people. Fast forward to 2023, it seems like everyone, again, that's the collective everyone, not literally everyone, but it seems like everyone is obsessed with trying to curate this aesthetic and have their Instagram feed look a certain kind of way. Most people do not have the money and the resources to participate in a truly luxurious lifestyle, right? So what ends up happening? People just start faking it. In 2020, throughout 2021 as well, as we were all grappling with this global pandemic that said, hey, you're supposed to shelter in place and you're not supposed to really be traveling. The amount of people that I saw vacationing in Tulum, like, please, please do the good people of Tulum a favor and stop colonizing their land. Influencers made it a thing. And then normal people saw that and they were like, hey, I want to emulate that. I want to go to Tulum. I was just like, why are we all flocking to colonize Tulum? And why are we all traveling here in the middle of a whole panorama? Like, why are we doing this? Vacation culture in general in this day and age really, really concerns me because again, I genuinely feel like some of y'all are not even trying to genuinely have a good time because for me, I don't know about you, but for me, when I'm on vacation and I'm like genuinely, genuinely trying to have a good time and I'm genuinely relaxing and resting, I don't think that that can take place when I'm wearing a full face of makeup every day and getting all dressed up and having a full on photo shoot while I'm on vacation and you're getting into arguments with their boyfriend because he's not taking your pictures correctly the way that you want them to be taken. How are you even having fun at that point? How are you even enjoying yourself at that point when it literally becomes an opportunity for just a photo op for you to look good in a bikini that you got from Shein and post it up on the beach all sucking your stomach in trying to make yourself look super super thin all on a vacation that you probably paid for using Klarna or Afterpay that you're going to be paying off for the several months to come and then people see that on social media and they're like oh my god he she they are living the life and really it's like no they're living the Klarna afterpay life, if anything. Not that I'm immune to that because girl, I think Klarna is wonderful, even though obviously it has its downsides or potential downsides as well. But just in general, like the lies, the way that we all participate in just faking it. When I was in college, I distinctively remember like that I would like purposely go out and do stuff and try to make my life look like I was living the life all in the name of having a certain kind of aesthetic on Instagram. And guess what? The influencers themselves can't even keep up with the lifestyles that a lot of them are projecting on social media. In a 2018 video entitled The Sad Truth About Being an Influencer, YouTuber Evelina talked about how influencers often fake perfection in their photos and how she has felt pressured to do the same in order to keep up with other influencers. I just felt like shit, like my, my stuff is not good enough. 
like I can't I can't post like being at home like before I would just like look at my cute mug and by my computer desk you know now it's like people are doing more and more and more crazy 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 stuff you just feel like you know if I'm not gonna keep up like I shouldn't even post this like my stuff isn't even worthy of post and let me tell you guys as Gabriel Zamora would say I keep it 100 if I keep it 100 I have traveled the world bitch and let me tell you a lot of those trips were not fun I could be in the most beautiful lookout in Paris and be absolutely miserable because number one, I'm with the most weirdest, snooty influencers that like all they do is sit on their phone. They don't care to have a real conversation. You know, my somebody's yelling at me at the phone. Like there's, there's literally nothing magical about the moment. Yes, the view is pretty. I'm in Paris. So I'm just like, well, shit, like, why do I feel this way? Like, I should be so happy. Like, I'm in, literally, I'm in paradise. But that's not what it's about. When you look at these photos, it doesn't mean that the person is having the best day of their life. They're sitting on this little boat, probably yelling at their boyfriend to get their angle right. And let me tell you, I highly doubt that that was the first take. They've probably been taking that for hours and hours. Didn't actually enjoy that. Um, they also had to take pictures of their food. Their food got cold. So by the time they ate it, it tasted bad. Um, and then she probably hated the photos anyway. So now the whole day is ruined. Guess what? Post the picture with an inspirational quote about finding, um, your soul somewhere and everybody's like oh my god goals no that's not how it works and that's why like i just like started to resent this i'm like i see all this shit and it's like why are we striving to project such perfection and it's like it's the same thing for me like now i'm like not sure like should i post this because it's not going to get that much engagement which is another thing so maybe i should only post cool things and people are going to love it and then we see even with what's going on with hawaii and how hawaii has all of this environmental devastation and all of this overcrowding and traffic and just way too many people in effect actually harming the quality of life of the actual people that are native to that environment environment because of the constant tourism and this is according to the international relations review in an article entitled hawaii tourism opposite of a paradise for locals they say that quote although tourism is a major industry in hawaii's economy it comes with problems affecting their environment economy and residents tourism has caused environmental damage to the land and water sources which has led to the ongoing water crisis in hawaii the residents not not only have to deal with limited water supply but also the high cost of living and according to an article about the spring 2022 resident survey from khon2 a hawaii news network 67 percent of residents agree that hawaii is quote being run for tourists at the expense of the local people and they go on to say that due to the large number of tourists and infrastructure built by non-local corporations overcrowding has pushed the native population out of their land and homes Corporations and non-locals taking the land of native Hawaiians causes them to lose their homes and creates an unaffordable housing market. Even if Hawaiians try to reclaim their land, the homestead program they rely on has a wait list that can last up to 30 years or more. And of course, Hawaii tourism was occurring long before social media came to exist. But I think that in the age of social media, it has exacerbated the issue. And I think that we run the risk of more and more places like Tulum and other social media vacation hotspots becoming just as bad as Hawaii due to the overexposure to it on social media and just the lack of individual identity. We're all taught to be conformists and flock to these places that ultimately leads to them being overcrowded. And in other places like the Bahamas and all the other places like Jamaica and the Bahamas that we look to as these vacation resorts that are literal modern day plantations because the actual workers who work in these resorts are getting paid very very little you know because there's always the lie of like tourism is actually really helpful to that country because you know you're helping the economy yeah you're helping the government maybe but the actual workers that are on the ground actually doing the work in the resorts in these vacation uh, establishments are getting paid pennies on the dollar are getting treated very poorly you know and it's not the natives who own the actual resorts like in the bahamas a lot of that is owned by the dutch and like other europeans and it's the natives who are getting the short end of the stick because they're ultimately toiling and working so hard for very little pay also that you could take a photo on instagram and make a tiktok about it like individuality is truly dead it's not to say that no one should ever go anywhere any 
you only have to stay in your hometown or your home city. I like to travel. I think most people enjoy traveling. I wish that people would travel and do things that they genuinely enjoy instead of constantly trying to chase after an aesthetic. That's when a place gets overcrowded because people are all flocking to the same place as opposed to people going to different states like and going to different places. Everyone is going to the same countries, the same territories, the same land and the land was not meant to inhabit all of these people in it. And this also even extends to the cars that we drive. Like so many people who make driving a Tesla their whole personality, like so many people who literally just like the whole point of a vehicle is supposed to be to get you from point A to point B. But we all know that people are not just trying to get to point A to point B. We all know that people want to pull up in a Tesla. They want to pull up in a Bugatti. Nobody wants to pull up in a Honda Accord or a regular, regular, actually good car that gets you from point a to point b like no one wants to do that everybody wants to be driving some fancy car and because cars say so much about our wealth status like we have literal influencers who are posting up on their uh designer cars and their fancy cars and that's like a thing it's a trend to like literally post photos of you sitting on the hood of your fancy car like in 2023 that's what we're doing because it's all wealth aesthetics it's all wealth porn and even to me like i have never ever been into like designer bags i'm gonna be completely honest like that's not my thing it's never been my thing i'm just not into it like it's just not my thing it's just never been my thing not into it so not approved just the idea that so many of us uh, adorn ourselves with por with with purses with purses <laughs> that have the initials of LV or Gucci, someone's initials or their last name on the bag. That is not your initials. It's not your last name, but it's someone else that is rich that has their last name or their initials plastered on a purse and therefore you carrying said purse with someone else's name a rich person's name on it says i'm rich too and that's supposed to be like a status symbol i just don't understand it like i'm sorry unpopular opinion but i don't care about things like that but that's just me that's not an insult to anybody who has these things but it's just like just think about it in its literal sense it's really really weird to me that <laughs> We go to such great extents to have these wealth signifiers for other people's consumption and not for our own consumption. How many times I see people decked out in designer everything only for you to be waiting at the bus stop? Like because people are so desperate to look a certain way they're not even investing their money into things that actually help their own well-being. It's only flashy stuff like that. And this is something that I've also talked about before on my channel, just this life of excess to constantly be hoarding products because they're trending at the moment. And the trend cycle is so short too. And we have all of these products that we're constantly hoarding that ultimately only destroys our planet because we are collecting products as wealth symbols only for them to not even be trending and be in anymore. Oh, and also the whole phenomenon of, I wore it once and I posted a photo of it on Instagram and I can't repeat an outfit on my timeline. So spending money on these outfits, but only to never wear them again because you already have a photo on Instagram. Aesthetic culture is literally ruining us. There was an influencer, they were living above their means and their rent was being increased therefore they had to move out of the apartment and they had garnered this huge huge following based on this really luxurious aesthetic that they had and it just goes to show how being an influencer is inextricably linked to lavish and extravagant displays of wealth. I also think of Todrick Hall, who famously was like, I bought a house. Like he made a whole video claiming that he had purchased a home when in reality, it was a rental home that he was living in and he couldn't even pay his rent. Hello everyone. Ah! I have been wanting to buy a home for a very, very, very long time. I saw over 50 homes to decide to get this one. He was literally sued by the homeowner for not paying his rent. And again, a lavish lifestyle that he's showing off and he can't even pay his own rent. 
And who could forget the rapper Bow Wow just a few years ago, how he tried to pretend like he was like about to take a private jet when in reality he pulled that picture from Google. When we try to make our lifestyles into trends and the trends are inherently classist, inherently just focused on the haves and the have nots, the people who do not have which is the majority of people are going to have to fake it. And it's just a sick cycle because they're faking it and then you see it and you're like, oh my God, they, they look like they're having so much fun. They look like they're living in these laps of luxury. But in reality, they're not. All you see is the end product of them posting up. We literally live in a culture right now where people are even like having increased levels of anxiety just to post a picture on social media because they're afraid that it's gonna ruin their aesthetic. And again, I am not immune to that myself. The ultimate takeaway from this video that I want you all to come away from it with is to not treat your life as a trend. Like, stop chasing trends. I've said this before. You keep chasing the trend, but the goalposts will keep shifting and changing and changing. If you set your own goalposts and don't let someone else set that for you, you will be content in your life. And I know that's so much easier said than done. It is so much easier said than done. Let me tell you, there are days where I even forget that. It's about eradicating the systems in place and the social stratification that inevitably causes the people who are at the bottom to suffer the most and the people at the top to set the standard for everyone else to follow let me know what you think are you guilty of this obsession with aesthetics how has it affected you what do you think about it i definitely want to hear from you all in the comments down below and if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you really 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 liked it then definitely hit that subscribe button for more content like this thank you all so so much for watching and i can't wait to see you all next time